Terra Talks, Ryan listens, episode 19 in 5, 4, 3, 2. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. It's Tara. That was a wonderful countdown, just like in, in, in television production. Yes. And all you did was laugh at the beginning. You yeah. didn't like come right in on, on cue. On, on cue. Because you notice I didn't say one. Cause you right, because you point. You point, on and I pointed to you, and instead you giggled. I did. Because it took me back. It was good memories, I remember. Okay, well, I guess that's good enough. <laughs> Tell them who I am. Uh, you're Ryan. This is true. I'm Tara. This is also true. Tara Talks Ryan Listens. Uh, shout out to all of our new listeners. Hey, new listeners. We love you. Shout Seriously, out to, thank you for listening. To those who have been with us since day one. Shout out to the day ones. Shout out to those who the OGs. watch it first thing in the morning or watch who listen to it first thing in the morning. And shout out to those who um, get caught up. Shout later. out to Mike Day because Mike Day just sent me another resource that I've been looking for. So now our um, Instagram really finna be popping. Shout Uh-oh. out to you. Uh oh. Go check out his newest, his newest project too. So uh, yeah, go on Instagram, follow at Michael WJ Day. Yes. So, happy belated Father's Day to... Shout out to the fathers, the dads, the stepdads, the... Uncles. Like a fathers, the uncles, the... uh, The really good pastors. The really good pastors, the deacons, uh, the man down the street that be helping your grandmama, because that's how Papa came to be. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Yes. Yeah. uh, Shout out to the single mamas who play both positions, as, as controversial as that statement can be. See, I've lived it. See, you skipping ahead because that was going to be my next point. I guess we'll go to that now. Right, do to do point. you think single moms should be recognized for Father's Day? I think single moms should be recognized every single day of the year. Um, Father's Day. Why not? I don't I don't I personally don't have a problem with that. Now, I generally don't tell my mom Happy Father's Day because I do know my father. And, you know, we uh. How do I put this? We're in a good place right now. Let's put it that way. So, um, and then my mom's husband told him happy Father's Day as well. You know, father figures. That's how it works. I'm not a fan of uh, single moms being recognized on Father's Day. I think that's what Mother's Day is for. I, uh, I know that there are single moms who are, you know, holding it down. But a single mom can't be a father. This is true. Um, Because people try to say, oh, there are moms out there playing both roles. You can't play both roles. You can be a really great mom, but you're still not going to be a father. You're not going to be a father. But there are women who do play both roles. They do do what they got to do and they get it done. So that's why I don't really have a problem with it. Obviously, nobody calls their mom or dad. But at the same time, why not? Hey, I mean, I'm not going to tell my mom Happy Father's Day. But if you do and your mama likes it, then, you know, more power to you. Again, because like, uh, I like, again, I don't, but I don't see why, you know, at the same time, you and I both, you know, grew up knowing our fathers. Right. And I think that's what it is. My mom was a single mom, but I still had like a really close relationship with my dad. So, yeah. It wasn't like a deadbeat dad situation. Right, right, right. So it's not like I, you know, not like he wasn't there at all or like he disappeared and never met him or left mom hanging or whatever the case is. But I also read somewhere, I can't remember what the post actually said between all of my social media accounts. I have no idea where I saved it. But it basically said if you and your child's father are separated, but the child's father is still in his in the child's life, then you're a single parent, not a single mom, or something to that effect. Um, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I can't remember the exact wording of it, yeah, but I, I saw that too. I need the exact wording for it to make sense to y'all if y'all haven't seen it. Um, I will look for it and try to post it on social media because that was, um, so it was it, if I remember correctly, it was a really good point. Um, but again, yeah, you're absolutely right. This is absolutely a touchy subject, but. Not to take away from the fathers, shout out to all of the great dads out there, all of the dads who do the best with what they got, and shout out to all the father figures that we just mentioned a second ago. I must say, I hate Father's Day. I feel you. Um, 
I I love those of you who still have your dads in your lives. I love seeing your posts, but I absolutely hate Father's Day. Um, As I mentioned in previous episodes, my dad passed away a few years ago. And so, you know, I guess time doesn't really heal all wounds. Um, It just, you know, dulls it a little bit. Um, So, yeah, Father's Day, Christmas, the anniversary of my dad's death and his birthday. Those are all kind of like touchy days for me. So I didn't do anything on Father's Day. I honestly didn't even go to church. I just kind of stayed by myself in my own feelings. And I needed that. I needed to not interact with people and just kind of like reflect on my own. I wish I could unsubscribe to Father's Day because I mean, literally right after Mother's Day, you start getting emails. What to buy, dad? Here's some tools. Here's some shirts. Here's some ties, grill accessories. And I'm like, please leave me alone. Get out of my inbox. And yeah, it's just like annoying. It's a constant reminder every time you get one of those emails, even though you know it's just a random constant contact blast email and a, you know, or a marketing campaign that some company is using and I don't blame them or fault them for that. But yeah, it's not my favorite day right now. Hopefully when we have kids, it'll get better and I'll be more excited to celebrate you rather than kind of thinking about, I mean, I'm always going to, I'm always going to think about my dad, of course, but hopefully that'll be a fun little um, new way to celebrate, I guess. Yeah. And I'm absolutely cool with, with you and the kids getting me ties. Cause I like ties. You love ties, yeah. You're, but I mean, I would get you nice ties, not the little ugly traditional Father's Day ties. Yeah, not the ones that come in the pack in the little plastic box with the shirt. No, like legit. I'm nice too old ties. for those. And by the time we have kids, I'll be too old for them for real. But I did want to say, like, just a real quick. Um, even though I hate Father's Day and don't really like being depressed or sad, um, three lessons that I learned from my dad, and obviously it's like a million more, but just wanted to keep it short today. Um, one is pay yourself first, and I definitely struggle with saving. I save money, and then it's like, okay, well, here's something that I need. And so, I mean, I guess that's the purpose of saving, but definitely he taught me that from an early age to just always like put aside, you know. 10% to yourself too. So I do that automatically when I get paid, but I definitely want to be better at saving and stocking it up for real, for real. Um, always tie speaking of 10%. And that's also something that just to be quite honest, I struggle with. I do give regularly, but man, tithing was easier when I was working at Old Navy making $200. What's the math on that? What's 10%, $20, $20, that was like, Oh, here you go. God, take it now making a little bit more. It's a little bit more of a task. And I guess that's, you know, what it's all about, sacrifice. But I learned that from my dad because my dad would tithe on everything because, of course, he had his own business and then several side hustles. Anything he made, he automatically put aside. And I just saw that growing up. He didn't really have to tell me. I just watched it and was like, wow, that's major. Like, no matter what you got, big or small, give to God first. So that's a good lesson. The third one is help people when you can. Man, my dad literally would help any and everybody with whatever it was he could, whether it was like actually fixing something or advice or giving them something. Even though my parents were divorced, there was this big, remember the big ice storm in Texarkana? Yeah. What was that? 2000? 2001. And it was Christmas day too. And yeah, 2001. Yeah, my dumb tail tried to go outside and ride my scooter down the street with all the ice, and it did not work. So we had this really bad, like seriously crazy bad ice storm. All the power was out and everything for what? A long time. It was like a week? Two. A lot, I think a lot it was two it was weeks. Longer than two, yeah, longer it was a, a while. I think for us it was a week and a half. Yeah, so my dad brought over this like old-fashioned lantern, and I mean, we didn't have nothing but candles <laughs> and flashlights, and that lantern was like, you know, you just put a little oil in there, and anyway, the point is... He was looking out for my mom and us, even though they were divorced. And that's how he was with everybody. So RIP TC Thomas Carr, um, still learning lessons and still hearing your voice. And um, yeah, shout out to all the great dads and happy Father's Day if you're listening and you're a dad. So speaking of holidays, um, happy Juneteenth. Hey. And so um, if you know this or not, Juneteenth is... Just the celebration of the end of slavery. Um, So that it took, what, like a year and a half, I think, for all the slaves to actually 
find out that slavery had end, had ended there was no social media back then so there was no way there to was just no regular media either right there was no news uh there was no uh email blast i mean literally like it was word of mouth mm-hmm. and it took that long to reach galveston texas which is where um you know the last i guess group of slaves found out that the war ended and that they were now free and this is something that i remember being like a big deal growing up i guess maybe being in tech growing up in texas that is why but yeah it definitely was celebrated there i don't know how much it's celebrated across the nation or if it's just kind of a southern thing or if it's well apparently it was a southern thing but now uh, the Pennsylvania governor just declared it a federal holiday. Uh, I no, saw that. I guess. A state holiday. State holiday, yeah. Yeah, I saw a lot of people. Um, so it was actually Pennsylvania and Michigan declared and Michigan, it okay. a state holiday. Yeah, and if our Wi-Fi wasn't so slow, I would have, this would have popped up soon enough for in time for me to not accidentally say federally. That's okay. Quite all right. Um, And so I saw a lot of people saying, should it be a national holiday? And I, I definitely agree. Um, One of the points that was made was the fact that we have way fewer holidays than other like similar like western cult uh countries which i think is odd i would agree like i don't know but yeah i'll I'll take another holiday um also i just kind of get like really weird mixed feelings on fourth of july because it's kind of like uh we you know Fourth of July ain't really for us. And so, you know, I'll I'll enjoy my day off and might eat some barbecue if, if anyone's grilling. But, you know, and I will I will go up for some red, white, and blue cupcakes, red, white, and blue jello shots, but um not really that excited about celebrating America. But Juneteenth is definitely worth celebrating and I think we deserve that day off as well. And, you know, I think it needs to be something that non- black people celebrate and that it's not just a a black community thing quick official history lesson juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the united states dating back to 1865 it was on june 19th that the union soldiers led by major general gordon granger not them g's landed at galveston texas with the news that the war had ended and that the enslaved were now free Note that this was two and a half years after President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, which became official January 1st of 1863. The Emancipation Proclamation had little impact on the Texans due to the minimal number of Union troops to enforce the new executive order. However, with the surrender of General Lee on April in April of 1865, the arrival of General Granger's regiment, the forces were finally strong enough to influence the outcome, the resistance. Yeah, so basically they weren't in a hurry to <laughs> let yeah. my people go, which is, you know, of course, understandable when you got free labor. Why would you want to get rid of that? But and that's exactly what happened. They were trying to hang on to their free labor. And again, the fact that there was no media, there was no news, there were no newspapers back then. And if there were black people, could most black we people were not, couldn't read. Black people were not allowed to read. Right. So um, they were punished if they were caught reading or trying to read or learning to read so at that point there was no way for them to know and that's pretty much why it's celebrated so i'm i'm excited i know we're going to the juneteenth celebration here this weekend so always looking forward to that um so yeah happy juneteenth um this week in what's on my timeline What's on your timeline, though? Lauren London's Father's Day post. Oh, Yeah. It was super sweet because um, she said, one of the reasons I fell in love with you, your fatherhood, today we celebrate you. And I think that's awesome because, I mean, that's just a reminder that love never ends. Even after someone dies, like, of course, she's still thinking of him, as are, are we. I mean, we all are. Um, but, yeah. So R.I.P. R.I.P. Henceforth and forevermore. Uh, uh, yeah. Speaking of Nip, you finally got your. Uh, I finally got my marathon shirt from the Marathon Clothing Store website. Obviously, from the day he passed, from the day he was murdered, because there's a difference between passing and being murdered, um, being assassinated. 
that was an assassination. So I think like two or three days later, I went on the marathon site. I was like, you know, I should get a shirt, you know, just to kind of show my support. If absolutely nothing else, I've always been, a, not always, but you know, for a while, I've been a fan of Nipsey Hussle's music and was slowly starting to learn about all the uh, philanthropic things that he was doing with his entrepreneurial ventures. Um, so at that point, I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and grab me a shirt. Buy one for my line brother, who uh, my frat brother, who basically is the reason why I've been a Nipsey Hussle fan for so long. Um, so I bought him one, too. I bought mine on April 2nd. I bought his on April 3rd. He got his in um, not April. Was it? Yeah, it was April. He got his in May, like early May. I just got mine two days ago. So, I mean, I figured they were going to, I figured it was going to take a while. I figured they were backed up. I figured there were so many people, you know, running to the, running to the marathon store to go support, but they've made over $10 million since Nipsey Hussle's wow. assassination. Like, and I think that's gross income, like gross revenue. So shout out to everybody, you know, coming together. That's really, it's a really good thing to see. And I really just wish that a lot of more people had had the opportunity to, and, you know, enjoy his music and enjoy his life while he was still living it because Same. it's truly inspirational, the things that he was able to overcome and the things he's able to do. So, um, forget everybody who was talking about me. I wouldn't even listen to him. He was left. Forget them. Okay. They don't count. Their words mean nothing. Go ahead. Even if you start listening tomorrow, and you decide you're a Nipsey Hussle fan. Enjoy it. That's what it's for. That's why he made music for people to enjoy it. You're going to learn quite a bit about how he literally created himself. And it's it's really an amazing and inspirational story. So, yeah. Shout out henceforth and forevermore. RIP. The marathon absolutely continues. Especially now that I got my shirt. I get to. I wanted to wear it on my birthday, honestly. But, um, yeah. So, I'm going to wear it probably. Might wear it this weekend for Juneteenth. I don't know. It depends. Either way it goes, I got to take a lot of pictures in it because I don't want to wear it too much. Because I'm like, hey, here you go with that never marathon shirt again. Mm. And I really want to order another one. I'm afraid it's going to take forever again because they had to shut down the actual store. Meek Mill and uh, I think Diddy kept buying out the entire store. So all these rich and famous rappers, you know, kept buying out the whole store, which is probably why mine took so long. Probably. You know, they could have sent me one, but it's all good. <laughs> So when you get a chance, um, check out Blue Ivy's dance recital. I just, I just love that she is growing up to be everything I thought she would be. Basically, I mean, I remember when she was born and was when there she, any doubt? when she was little, people used to like make jokes about how she's probably like in the rehearsals telling all the dancers what to do, and now I see it absolutely see it um so she's just so adorable first of all her uh, performance was at the debbie allen dance uh dance academy in la and just love debbie allen have always loved her since fame um she's really nice in person too <laughs> really she is i had the opportunity to meet her once of course she did it was cool that's what HBCUs do. You get to be in front of people like wow. that. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anywho, um, love Debbie Allen on Grey's. I don't really like her on Grey's because Catherine Avery is a hot mess sometimes. She'd be doing too much, but still always love Debbie Allen in anything. So I love that she's just on Grey's, my favorite show. Um, it's awesome that she can play the part of such a mean person. Exactly, and still be lovable. Right. Um, And then back to Blue. Little girl, little mama, just hit the splits. She hit all her numbers. Can you imagine being a kid in her dance company, like in her class? Like you come home from school and talking to your parents about how cool dance class was. And then you're like, oh, and Blue showed me how to do. Wait, Blue who? Right. Your parents like, and it's just like, wait, is my daughter in the same class as Beyonce's daughter? what like it's seriously gotta be intimidating too. it has to be intimidating and i'm just gonna tell you if our daughter was dancing with blue ivy we would have practice all night like first of all you, <laughs> you're gonna have to get on her level and the fact that they danced to beyonce's um before i let go i loved that i thought that was super adorable but 
Yeah. And shout out to everyone who keeps saying that she ruined that song. You're trash. Um, <laughs> the hell to the no, no singer died. Hell no. To the no, no, no. That was my jam. That was my answer to a lot of questions. Yes. Like, literally. Bishop Bullwinkle at 70. Yeah. Sad. So if you're not familiar with that song, go look it up. Just go look it up. Do yourself a favor. Yeah. Like, you should, yeah, people really need to pay more attention to blues music. Yes. Because it's so true. It's so true. One, um, This lady that used to do my hair several years ago, she used to always listen to that blues. And I, it was so annoying to hear, like, just nothing but blues. But it was, like, pretty accurate. I was listening to the lyrics like, yeah, you're right, Shirley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're absolutely <laughs> right. Men are trash. Um, also, on my timeline... Did you hear that Whataburger, also known as What a Burger, also known as Whataburger? When I was little, I really thought it was Water Burger. I did too. I think we all did. W a t e r. Um, like I remember being a kid, and you know how uh, when you had a dentist appointment as a kid, they would come pick you up from your school. Yep. And then take you to uh, McDonald's. Yeah. In my case, um. I wanted to go to Whataburger, but the lady was just like, oh, I think it's too far. We don't have time to go that way. Is, is McDonald's okay? I'm like, yeah, sure. So, right, I'm sitting here like, you know why they call it Whataburger? It's because the bun is going to be a little bit wet when you chew into it. Oh, my gosh. You're Honestly, so it's adorable. because the one time I had, the first time I had a Whataburger, the lettuce, was there was like so much lettuce and tomato on it, and it made the bun a little soggy. So, so that's um, I thought it was called water because burger. Whataburger is open 24 hours. We used to go there. I'm saying used to like it happens so often. Okay. I just remember going there after what you call it. Uh, hallelujah service. What's that? Instead of Halloween, it was uh, hallelujah. Yeah. And then also what is the New Year's Eve one called? watch night watch night okay so after watch night which was um obviously like midnight 1 a.m that was the only thing open so we would go there um but yeah i love me some waterburger so i guess that's what waterburger to me represents staying up past my bedtime as a kid <laughs> so i was like okay what that's else so what's open like yeah and so absolutely love waterburger i missed it when i moved to virginia and then when i moved to our kansas i was kind of like oh, i wish i had a waterburger so i would just get waterburger whenever we went home Every or whenever we, we were, were in, in dallas Texas, yeah for whatever reason gotta go to waterburger we have to then all of a sudden waterburger start popping up here two of them now it's like i think five total yeah in the region where we live so yeah love it um some people who didn't i guess grow up with it are like it's not all that okay you can sit down and also several seats so many seats and also you're not ordering the right thing if you don't like it so whatever well i just got the whataburger why when there's so many other options okay so um so here's the thing um i guess i never said what happened the whataburger uh basically sold its majority ownership stake to a Chicago company. And so I saw so many people on my timeline legit going crazy, like losing their minds because they feel like next thing you know, they feel like the product is going to change <laughs> drastically. And they feel like it's going to be like, I've I've been watching all of these, so many memes where people are just like, basically acting like they're gonna turn it into like chicago pizza or something <laughs> and i just i mean that is a valid concern it's a little bit dramatic look at this one enjoy the new what a slice chicago style pizza so they put a deep so dish dramatic. chicago style pizza on some orange back on the orange background like the actual whataburger marketing and yeah I, so dramatic you find out i was reading all the comments and when you get a chance just yeah check it out people are are really flipping out what do you what would you be upset if they changed anything what if would they you- ruin that mustard i'm gonna be so mad because that yellow mustard like the, literally the best yellow mustard in the world i have not had mustard just plain mustard better than whataburger i don't know what it is i don't know how they make it i don't know what they do to it wow there could very well be drugs in it 
and I'm fine with it because it tastes amazing. Um, if they ruin that mustard, that's one thing. Uh, what else? If they change the recipe for the sweet tea, which is basically water, tea, sugar. and like a gallon and a half worth of sugar. Like literally like a full full size ten pound bag and just a thing. Uh what else? The onion rings are amazing. The onion rings. The ketchup. The the spicy ketchup. One of the posts cracked me up. Somebody was like, they just can't change the recipe to the ketchup. It's so good they should bottle it. And I was like, they, they do. do. Like where do you Genius. live? Like right. Where <laughs> that do they is not, not bottled and sold at Walmart. Yeah. Um, but anywho. Let me see if it's on Amazon so people can buy it. I I'm not I'm I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and and think that they're gonna keep it. I think they're gonna keep it very similar. I think they're just trying to expand it to more places. Yep, you can absolutely buy ketchup. The Whataburger spicy ketchup on Amazon. Um and the mustard. And the regular ketchup. And the regular ketchup. Sure. And the honey mustard. And the jalapeno ranch. And the honey barbecue. So basic. And the creamy pepper. So seriously, all of those sauces are what make the burgers, the sandwiches. The fries, the onion rings. All of that. The whole experience. Yeah. The jalapeno ranch is uh, really good with the fries and the onion rings. The creamy pepper sauce is really good on pretty much any sandwich. Yeah. So Whataburger opened up in 1950. And it now has 800 locations in 10 states. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That A-frame orange is just legendary. I, I just, so many good memories. Um, if you haven't tried Whataburger, you might want to check it out before they change it. <laughs> LOL, JK. I don't think they're going to change anything. Uh, they better not. They sh- really should not. Um, if they want if they want a return on their investment, they won't. Let's exactly. That and that's my whole point to people saying they're going to change this. Like, do you think that they're stupid? Because we will stop if you ruin it. I'm so serious. So Cracker Barrel stood up and took a stance on LGBTQ rights. Um, basically, there was this Tennessee pastor who was trying to sound like trying to reserve um, a room or some tables or some space for some event. And I guess he has, he called for LGBTQ executions in his sermons. And As in executing LGBTQ people? That's how I'm reading this. Wait, go back up. Go back up a little bit. Cracker Barrel bars Tennessee pastor who called for LGBTQ executions in sermons. So Cracker hmm. Barrel's response was, we serve anyone who walks through our doors with genuine hospitality, not hate. And require all guests to do the same. And I love this. I agree. Yeah. He said the government should execute gay people. Here's my thing. First of all, I also commend Cracker Barrel's response because hate is just pointless. I don't understand why people are so against the civil liberties of other humans. I don't understand it. I really don't. I just have no. I don't understand it at all, but I really don't understand it when it comes from people that claim to be Christian. Exactly. That's the worst part. Because if you really read your Bible, Jesus hung out with prostitutes, a leper, basically the people who were exiled from the community and part of society. Right. Not really religious. Um, So, yeah, reread your Bible real quick and reevaluate um your your thoughts and ideas after that as christians our job is not to judge but to be the witness so if you understand how a court system works you're literally playing the wrong part there's only one judge in the seat there are several witnesses Mm, preach but there's only one judge and that one judge is god you over here preaching i'm trying i wasn't trying to (laughs) but so here's my thing um just stop hate just stop the hate don't so, stop it so the reason i loved this uh even more than the obvious was because i love cracker barrel and a lot of people don't like it and think it's racist just because they have pictures of like old timey stuff and it's like mostly white people i thought it had something to do with the title too right oh yeah and the cracker barrel i don't know i don't, I don't get it that. i don't think i obviously their response to this i don't think that they are um racist but yeah i'm a fan i'm gonna go get me some uh so my my one of my favorite things to do is to take my grandma to cracker barrel because 
She Aww. loves Cracker Barrel and she thinks it's so far. And it's like, what, 20 minutes from here? Not even that. Yeah, it's like a few exits away. And so I think it's about time for me to have a Cracker Barrel date with my grandma in honor of them standing up on the right side of this issue. So Yeah, I'm all for supporting companies who support civil liberties because I am, I wouldn't call myself necessarily anybody's ally. I wouldn't call myself a feminist. I wouldn't call myself... um but I probably am. I was going to say, you are all those things. Yeah. Um, I I just seriously don't understand why people feel the need to be so hateful towards somebody who doesn't look or behave the same way that they do. Here's my thing. If you don't like it, look the other way the same way you do everything else. Because everything else that has nothing to do with you, like, um, you know, black people getting executed <laughs> or uh, Muslim people being banned from mm. a country for no reason. You know, you look the other way when it comes to that. But then when somebody else is doing something close to you that you don't appreciate, you get all up in arms Got about it. it. Keep that same energy. First of all, who does what with who in whatever bedroom or wherever they are, wherever they are, it has not, nothing not to do with how you live your life. Most of life. It's not what happens to you, but how you respond to it. And you responding in that type of way to somebody else's lifestyle. Makes no sense. Makes no sense whatsoever. Just because these two men over here are in a relationship, that's not affecting you. That's not affecting your salary if you got a job because you sound like you don't. It's not affecting the education that you've earned if you ever did. And it's not going to affect anything in your future. Sure, your children may grow up. Um, with media that has a lot more representation of the LGBTQ community. And that's because they exist as people. So why not have representation? I don't understand what's so what, why are you so against it? Second of all, if you're such a great parent and you want to protect your children, why are you letting them watch TV unsupervised in the first place? Why are you not sitting in front of them with a book, helping them read things better? I could go on and on about this, but the point is, shout out to Cracker Barrel for being on the right side of history. Indeed. Well, that's all I have for what's on my timeline this week. What you got for obscure news? So, obscure news is my turn for that. Yeah, because I could get on a soapbox and go on and on about civil rights and and <laughs> land of the free. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, that's what I loved about the Juneteenth thing that said free ish. <laughs> free ish. Free ish. Like blackish. So, grownish. Obscure news. Those are going to be amazing shows. Like, that's like probably the best series of spinoffs since uh let's let's not because we can talk about shows all day too and you know what i was finna try to change the subject but here we are cnn sparks backlash for an article on white woman named lakeisha what apparently over the weekend cnn ignited a debate after they highlighted the story of a woman from a small town in mid in western ohio with an ethnic sounding name. Basically it goes on to tell the story of Lakeisha Francis, a blonde haired, blue eyed white woman. Twitter went all the way in on CNN, oh, CNN wow. for this. There were a lot of tweets saying, uh, the, I think the original headline or something read what it's like to be black for a minute because her name's Lakeisha. So if she says, hi, I'm Lakeisha and she's a white woman. Um, they had this notion of what it's like to be black for a minute, which nothing can make you black for a minute unless you're black. It's not a thing. So obviously Twitter went all the way in on that whole thing. Let me see. Let me read a couple of these tweets. First of all, uh, someone tweeted, she can change her name, but we can't change the color of our skin. Yep. Or the hate they have for us. So that's the biggest fact, first of all. Um, I don't know what you were trying to accomplish. This is another tweet. With this, when black folk faced ethnic names, black folks faced with ethnic names faced more consequences than a white chick named Lakeisha. I'm sure with her complexion, she could still get the American protection. I was going to read a bunch of tweets, but literally it's the same one four times. And then Here's the thing. <sighs> I just think it's funny how Lakeisha funny how. or DeMonte is considered an ethnic sounding name, but... Ethnic sounding in quotations, obviously. 
just because it's not like Molly or Ben, but white people have some weird sounding names too. Yeah. Gertrude. Right. I would never name anybody. I would never name my child Gertrude or Gidget. Gidget sounds like gadget. Gidget sounds like a malfunctioning gadget. I mean, I don't know. I just like if we're just being fair. I just again, you 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 brought us here. Nobody asked to come here. You brought we, us here. Not trying to come you here. robbed us of our language. Robbed us of our culture. Robbed us of told our his name names. Was Toby. And then, like I, I don't know. I yeah. I, honestly, the the point is not about the name. First of all, your mama named you that. Right. So you need to have a conversation with her. That's first of all. Second of all, you can change your name. Absolutely, you could just change your name. But what I can't do is take my black skin off my body. And because regardless of our names, I mean, people think we have um, white sounding or non ethnic sounding names. Tara, Ryan. I grew up. Kids call me. Oh, you got a white boy name. But what, is that? what? What does that even mean? But we still tense up when we get pulled over mm-hmm. we still have to think okay do we need to turn the camera on do we need to record this like you don't think that like you're, you're not no yeah. i mean that's just it's just these are stupid. not problems that you have like it's, i don't fear that like i i fear like when i get pulled over that might be my last day on earth uh lakeisha from ohio from western ohio the inconvenience of a slight inconvenience yeah, of trying having to, to having to explain ticket, yeah. that her name is actually Lakeisha and not trying to play a bad joke. But yeah, I mean, pull out your driver's license. Oh, her name's really Lakeisha. How about more white people name their kids what they think is ethnic sounding names and just confuse everybody? Yeah, because a lot of alleged ethnic sounding names are actually really cool names. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I don't just, know. I, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot we could go into on that too. But again, I don't really want this to be a political show, and this segment's supposed to be hilarious, right? I was like, this is not funny. <laughs> so let's jump into something that is actually quite hilarious. The headline reads: Mariah Carey birthday cake request goes awry after hilarious misunderstanding. A woman in England instead received a cake. Featuring someone else entirely. Now, I got to admit, I, when I saw this headline, I thought Mariah Carey requested some type of extravagant cake and they got it wrong. I was like, oh, no, somebody's in trouble. Because if you know anything about Mariah Carey, she does not play. She does not. She is very particular, eclectic, uh, eccentric. She's and, a diva. She's a diva. I was trying not to say she's a diva, but she's she, a diva. She don't care. But yeah, uh, so i'm gonna post a screenshot of this image so y'all can see exactly what i'm talking about if you haven't seen the story um (laughs) this is hilarious so apparently the bakery misheard so the tweet reads my cousin in england told her colleagues she wanted a mariah carey birthday cake they misunderstood and this is the cake they made her instead it's marie curie Mm. looking very festive oh my goodness not mariah carey marie curie Marie Curie, Marie Curie, Marie <laughs> Curie, Marie Curie does not. That's funny. Now, if she has an American accent and lives in London or England or wherever they are, Marie then Curie. I could see how they misheard her accent. That's so funny. That's hilarious. Who is Marie Curie, by the way? What does she do? Oh, she um was a nurse in the military. Oh, Madame Curie. Is that her? The same person? Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. Like me remembering stuff. Yeah. Um. Like very famous physicist and chemist who conducted pioneering research on radioactivity. First woman to win a Nobel Prize. Yeah, she was pretty. I mean, I would see I mean, why she, somebody would want that. Yeah, as a she's cake, pretty but dope, but she ain't Mariah it's not Carey. Mariah. And they literally made the cake with the very first image. That's that adorable. Pops up. Um, keyword that says looking very festive, and festive is the farthest adjective from because back then people right did not people really did not smile in pictures. cameras yeah it because was just like you have to wait so long for the picture to even take you know back when i had to like wind the whole thing up and then sit there and hold still for right a bunch he of was seconds. under a sheet yeah and um it see if she obviously nobody would want to smile for like 27 seconds straight for no reason 
And it's probably it's probably way longer than that. It was probably way longer than twenty seven seconds. I'm anyway, assuming, like five point minutes. is, point it's is, not Mariah Carey. It's not Mariah Carey. But yeah, um, that that gave me quite a chuckle, especially when I re- thought it was gonna be Mariah Carey order the cake and it got messed up so cake fails is like one of my favorite things one like, of my absolute favorite things yes. when i just need a good laugh yes go on buzzfeed and type in cake, cake fails, fails. or just it. type in cake fails in google mm-hmm. and i'll probably post a couple other hilarious ones since we're talking about it nothing beats that styrofoam cake the styrofoam though. cake from what was that two weeks ago it was last week last week whatever man that would have been it was sad I would have been mad <laughs> 50 dollar gift card bro you owe me 700 for ruining this moment but yeah, this um, they will always give you a good laugh, like this one right here. Like, look, look at that. It's crazy. <laughs> it says, <laughs> "Obviously, this is somebody's graduation cake." It's supposed to say, "Congratulations, you did it." This says, "Congratulation, you done it." And it's like not written well. It's not placed well. It's poor decorations. It will give you a really good laugh. I promise. This one says sent from iPhone. Wow. Okay. Uh, enough of that. That's all I have for obscure news this week. All righty. Let's go ahead and hop into our segment that we are now calling asking, asking for, for a, a friend. friend. And remember, you can always just shoot us an email at a a s k t t r l a s k t t r l or ask ttrl at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. We want to hear about your relationship drama, your work drama, your family drama, or just random thoughts or random questions for us. And so our first question comes from Skunky. Thank you for making up your own fake name so I don't have to come up with another Grey's Anatomy <laughs> character and upset Ryan. I wouldn't be upset. It's just like there's more shows. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but Grey's has like 50 characters and I am I'm in that right now. Um, so Skunky says, I am a 28 year old guy with a long term girlfriend to whom I've been planning to propose. Everything has been fine up until recently. She seems to have a complete lack of motivation. We are both professionals in our careers and doing well. However, she doesn't seem to have the same drive that she did earlier in our lives. We've known each other since high school and started dating when we were in grad school. We bonded over how we wanted to change the world through our creative philanthropy ideas. We've been making plans and I believe we're ready to start making moves. But but lately... I can't read today, but lately we've not been on the same page in taking action toward the list of goals we set. I'm concerned about her procrastination. She swears she's fine and has been seeing a therapist for a reason whatsoever, for whatever reason, for whatever reason. I've even offered to go with her, sort of like couples counseling. I respect her privacy oh, in that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I respect <laughs> her privacy in that, but I'm concerned that she doesn't feel that she can share things with me. She knows I want to propose, and we have been seriously discussing marriage for the last two years. I'm itching to propose, but her lack of communication and deteriorating ambition over the last year are causing me to have second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seven thoughts. <laughs> wow. I'm still in that. Not just second thoughts. Yeah, I'm I'm counting from now on. Is she hiding something or someone? Oh. Mm. Did I do something wrong and she won't tell me? I don't know, and it's driving me up a wall. I don't want to seem demanding or controlling, but I'm ready to put all of our plans in motion. At this point, I'm afraid she might be emotionally checked out. Mm. Ouch. And that I may have to start thinking of plans without her. I do not want that. And I hope I'm overthinking, but I'd rather just leave or split amicably than get my heart broken trying to make it work. That's understandable. Especially if she really is pulling away. Any advice is appreciated. Side note, I know you two are Nipsey Hussle fans. He's a big inspiration for the plans I keep talking about. Life is short and I don't want to waste time, especially since these plans are intended to help others who are in need. Okay. Thanks, Skunky. So if we Skunky were not B. engaged, I wonder, I wonder if he got this nickname from uh, Doug. You remember on um, Doug, the cartoon yes, back in I the do. day, there was a character named Skunky Beaumont who was always just this random cool guy who everybody referenced a lot, but you never actually saw him. You remember that? Vaguely. And then apparently, I, uh, apparently, there was like a Disney version of Doug that I never watched. Yeah, you remember? It was a Disney version of Doug, but um, apparently. 
skunky actually exists. I'm going to look that up later. Mm. Point is, let's get back to this letter. Um, if we were not already engaged, I would swear you wrote this letter. Why you say that? Because. I don't know. It was just like a lot of. I, I see some similarities. Similarities. Yeah. Um, it's good to know we're not the only ones. Yeah. But I wasn't going to say nothing about the similarities in the letter. <laughs> I was going to not put you on blast like that. But I mean, yeah. I, I Okay. Well, what that says is going to make it easier to answer now. Yeah. Because I was trying to think of how I'm going to answer this without mentioning the similarities. Uh, okay. Care. All right. You don't care? Okay, cool. I mean, don't like go too deep, but. Uh, I suppose. <laughs> so, I mean, I will say just full transparency, just like we've mentioned before, um, you know, depression anxiety mental health a lot of that has been a part of i would say both of our lives at some point or another Mm -hmm. and i went through a point in my life where i lost my dad and my grandmother back to back and went through like a bit of a phase of depression which leads to a lack of motivation leads to literally like that it's like okay you may be working and being successful in your career because Like that's kind of, to me at least, bare minimum. But all the side projects that you want to work on and your like passion projects may be put on hold when you are going through um, a bit of a depression phase. So I like that you mentioned that, that you acknowledge that and that you're wanting to go to to couples therapy. Why did she not want to go? Did I miss that? I don't think you did. I was reading along. Um, I don't think he mentioned it. Offer a couple. I respect her price. I don't don't know why she doesn't want to go. And that makes sense as to why he's that. Yeah, that validates his concern about her pulling away. That worries me because I mean, like I said, we have gone to couples therapy and I go, we go by ourselves. But if you felt like, hey, I have, you know, X, Y, and Z issues, I think we showed a couples counseling. I was like, no, that would be a red flag. That would be weird. Like, why not? Why wouldn't you want to? Like, what are you? What are you discussing in therapy on your own that you couldn't discuss with me if we're talking about marriage? Because, right. like, you know what I mean? It like, sounds like only one of y'all is talking about marriage at this point. Like, I go to, like, we go to counseling separately, but I'm not talking to my therapist about anything that I wouldn't say to you. Mm-hmm. Like, if anything, I usually come home and be like, okay, this is what she told me. Like, right, right. I don't know. That's the only thing that concerns me. I would, I would try again to go you know to couples counseling to really get to the bottom of it because to me if there is something going on like you're kind of alluding to if she's checked out or if she wants to end the relationship and just doesn't know how to say it she might need that third party to help her tell you um i would say this hmm is it my turn to answer yet because you I have not had a chance to actually answer this question. There's so much to unpack here. True. Go ahead. All right. So, yeah, because normally you read the question and then I answer first. But anyway, uh, first of all, yeah, shout out to, yeah, shout out to Nipsey Hussle for inspiring. Because when I, the, around the time of his passing, his assassination, I saw a bunch of tweets and Instagram posts and stuff that just said they took one Nipsey Hussle. But another one just popped up in everybody's city. So, so true. shout out to you for, you know, being selfless, you know, because a lot of people define se- success differently. And if you define success as helping the people around you, then I 100 percent salute whatever it is you're trying to do. So, um, yeah, I, and I 100 percent feel you on that. I'm kind of in that same boat right now. I'm just trying to figure out what I can do. But it sounds like you already got plans. So let's unpack this letter. First of all, um, 20-year-old guy with a long-time girlfriend. So I'm assuming your girlfriend is close to the same age as you. I don't know very many 28-year-old women who are in relationships but don't want to get married. Now, that is right there, point number first one. First of all, that's that the is biggest First of all, I saw something where somebody was like, um, if you're dating somebody between this age and this age, like don't approach them unless you're talking about marriage yes and that is accurate 22 yeah you're just trying to like figure out yourself and live your life 28 29 30 31 32 anywhere between i would say like what 26 and 35 Mm -hmm. look 
because I think 36 you hit uh, you like relapse and go back to I'm just trying to live my life you know what I mean like if yeah. <laughs> but I think that 26 to 35 yeah and y'all correct me if I'm wrong but I think that's that time where you're like well, what are we doing yeah I would not yeah based on based on surroundings I would agree okay so I think it's been found up until recently complete lack of motivation I, I feel you on that um you know, trying to motivate your partner, your significant other, your spouse is is it, it can be difficult, you know, especially when your motivational words are uh, perceived as judgment or uh, condemnation. I guess you got to try not to have a condescending tone. You have to approach everything from a place of love. And even if you are, it still may be perceived the wrong way. So that's always an uphill battle unless they just get it unless you just magically say it right the first time which um doesn't always happen so bonded over how we wanted to change the world with our creative philanthropy ideas that sounds awesome um tara and i did too there's another similarity believe we may do ready to start making moves so um maybe we've not been on the same page with the action. all right so I get why you are, you know, questioning everything that's happening because it sounds like you simply have a completely different person. I need a timeline, honestly. Yeah, that's what's a missing timeline here. would help. Um, how long has it been since this um, perceived decline in motivation? Um, because the time, yeah, the timeline would definitely help here. Obviously, her side of the story would help too, but it sounds like you don't want to be um named here sounds like you know and obviously we're not the therapist y'all need to see but we will definitely help you try to answer this question so i i, I can't quite tell if she's trying to pull away it sounds like she might just be going through something that she doesn't want to tell you about which honestly is still a major concern um sometimes it takes a while but when tara's feeling away about whatever i usually eventually get it out of her she doesn't always want to talk right away. That's fine. You got to respect that. Um, she will talk to you when she's ready to talk to you. Hopefully, that's the only thing that's happening here. Well, sometimes for me, when I have something that I'm that's bothering me, I don't know how to verbalize it yet. So it's like she may be going through something and she may not even be able to identify it yet. And so I would, like I said, I don't know the timeline, but I would give her a little bit of time. Um you brought up a really great point of, you know, your tone will impact her response. So if you're, you know, trying to motivate her and it comes off like a drill sergeant, that can be hard to receive. Also, you're not going to be at the same level of drive and passion at the exact same time all the time. Also a good point. So she still may have those same goals, but it just may look differently. And so one thing I would encourage you to do is to get back to your why, get back to dreaming together. Because if I think back to when we were first started dating and long distance and just on the phone for literally 12, 15, 20 hours, we were daydreaming together about our future. We were talking out our why. We were talking, you know, big goals. And sometimes when you're in a long-term relationship, life comes at you and you become more focused on the essentials, you know, what you got to do, which like I was saying is that career and you put your side hustles on the side, literally, and you forget to dream because you're being practical, when I listened to Hill Harper speak, um, I had the opportunity to meet him at an event. He, at the beginning of it, was like, write down your you know, wildest dream. So we all did it or whatever. Then at the end of his talk, he was like, go back to your wildest dream and expand it. Make it bigger. And then he was like, if you were able to do that, then you weren't dreaming big enough in the first place. I told you. So deep. Yes. And I'm just like, wow, he's right. Because we limit ourselves because we think sometimes we think too realistically. 
and we we limit our our dreams and our goals and she may be doing that she may be being realistic and you know I, I I mean we've talked about how it took us so long to even do this podcast because I could come up with a hundred reasons why we didn't have time or why we shouldn't and I was no exception frankly to be being honest I am the more uh I guess headstrong one of the two of us, but there's times where I just want to sit down and be still. And so I would encourage you to have a date night where (laughs) not a Netflix and chill, not a dinner and a movie, but where you literally light some candles, put a blanket on the floor and get a pen and paper and just dream together out loud on paper. Why haven't we done that? I actually, why haven't we done that? <laughs> I come up with the best ideas for other people. All right, we're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do it too. Um, Skunky, we want you to do it. And I think that will reignite her passion. I think it will even like allow her to hear you differently because it. let's just use working out, for example, because that's like my lifelong resolution um, is to lose weight. And so if I say in January 1, I want to lose weight. And then you hit me up on March 1st, time out. Why are you eating that cookie? I'm going to be mad. Like, let me enjoy this cookie. You know what I mean? <laughs> but if you hit me up on March 1st and you're like, hey, babe, you want to go for a walk? Absolutely. I would love to go for a walk. You know what I mean? So it's a matter of negative reinforcement versus positive reinforcement. And so just finding. In my defense, I do neither of those things. Yeah, so, no, I'm you, not bad, but no, I'm, I'm not, not good using either. you as an example. Yeah, you neutral. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you are neutral now because, you know, a few years ago, you know, I definitely had a hard time receiving constructive criticism or even motivation from you because I took it so harshly. And that's one thing I've been working on is how to not be so easily offended, but to take it as like we are on the same team. Mm hmm. So we're working towards, oh my goodness. Can I just talk real quick commercial break? Okay. The episode of I the read. Commercial break too, so go for it. The episode of the read with Kadeen and DeVal where they were talking about a similar issue with the weight loss and stuff. You know, she's had three kids and they were just talking about how they motivate each other. And she was just saying how sometimes she don't want to hear it. And, you know, but... At the same time, if you really want to be the best version of yourself for your partner, then that's not them just barking at you orders. You know what I mean? It's like we are, you know, if you are religious and you believe God brought you together to make, you know, to compliment each other. And so... That's just, and I mean, you know, we always say, oh, you're my best friend. You're my best friend. My best friend not going to let me walk around with a booger in my nose. This is true. Or with toilet paper on my shoe. This is also true. And so, you know, it is it is hard hearing criticism or feedback or even motivation that you interpret as criticism or feedback from your partner. Because being in a relationship, especially a long-term relationship, and I imagine a marriage, is like having someone hold a mirror up to your face and that mirror is going to reflect who you truly are the good the bad and the ugly so my two pieces of advice would be to have the little dream together date night and then also really try again for couples therapy because if there is if she's truly pulling away or if there's something she's not telling you that's going to be probably the best and safest way to find out side note from my commercial um this really doesn't have much to do with anything, but this is uh, one of those times where team sports as a child comes in handy. Um, you're going to be on a team. You're going to have uh, you're playing a sport where it requires the entire teams to work, entire team to work toward the same goal. You also have a coach who is going to be firm with you in making sure that you and your team are successful, not only during whatever game, but in life as well. So, yeah, the coach is going to yell sometimes. The coach is going to make you do push-ups. The coach is going to make you run. But it's all with a goal to, you know, for, for you know, improvement, you know? At the same time, your teammates are going to yell at you. Let's say, for instance, if it's football, you get a perfectly thrown pass. You're wide open and you drop it because you weren't focused on where the ball was and where your hands were needed to be. Yeah, your teammates are going to yell at you. You know, you made a mistake. 
But at the same time, they're yelling because they know that you could have caught that ball. They know there's no reason you didn't aside from a lack of focus. So you got to remember, just like in a relationship, the two of you are on the same team and you're working towards the same goal. Sometimes you do get frustrated with your partner because it's something that you know that you both know in your heart of hearts that shouldn't require this much effort, shouldn't require, you know, a whole lot of yelling to get it done because you know 100 percent that they're capable of it. All you got to do is put their mind to it. And sometimes you got to remember that while you are on the same team working towards the same goal in order to win, it's not football. So you can't just yell the same way that you will yell at the receiver if you the quarterback and threw a beautiful pass and they dropped it. Mm-hmm. So yes. uh, same thing if you are at the three point line and your point guard runs up right into the key. Perfect time for alley oop and they jump too late. But you know, deep in your heart of hearts that they could have timed it perfectly because you've seen them do it before. And it's like, why didn't you do it right here when it counted? You know? So it's just like a matter of making sure that you communicate what's absolutely important is to make sure that one, they're in the right place mentally, because let's say they lost focused, they lost focus. And you have to be there for your teammate to help them regain that focus, to make sure that they stay on track and vice versa. Cause it's a team sport. It goes both ways. Everybody needs the help from time to time. Kind of look at it that way. But at the same time, this is a different game. So you have to approach the conversation a little differently. Also keep in mind, men and women just typically communicate differently. So I would encourage you to yeah, you this know, is true. make sure that you're communicating in her love language. If you're not familiar with that, just Google it, take the test, figure out your love languages and communicate with each other in your love language. I was listening to something the other day where they were talking about this exact same thing, how women, men and women communicate differently. If we're in the car driving past a, a street full of restaurants and you say, hey, are you hungry? And I'm like, no, I'm good. And I keep driving towards the house. You're upset now because you took that as, oh, you just don't want me to eat. You don't care about me. You don't care that I'm hungry. And now you're just upset for no reason. You never said you were hungry. And that was the example they used. You that's know? a really great example because that's when, happened. When it's a, yeah. So I don't, <laughs> I don't always know what you're thinking. A lot of the times I can read your mind, but a lot of times I cannot. I knew you were going to do that. As soon as I said read your mind, I knew you were going to do that. Point is, um, in my case, I'm like, look, I'm hungry. You want, what do you want to eat? And you still singing. Here's my thing, though, because my mom used to do that. Um, I need you to say, <laughs> what do you want to eat from a restaurant, fast food, or at home? Because if you say, what do you want to eat? And I say, Ruth's Chris, and you really think in McDonald's, then now we got an argument. But anywho, that's not the question. Argument. I would just be like, more like this price range yeah but anywho point is good luck skunky please send us a follow-up we want to know and i just want to say like notice we did not say go ahead and propose and hope it works out notice we didn't say go ahead and break up with her either exactly there's a lot that a lot that can happen in the middle one there's a lot that can continue to happen two she could really just be in a weird place right now and doesn't know how to approach it and she pro- and again, y'all have been talking about marriage. She knows that she wants to marry you as well. And she's probably just feeling something new and she's afraid. She doesn't want to scare you off with whatever baggage that she's handling right now. She doesn't want to scare you off by sa- trying to explain how she feels and she can't put it into words yet. Um, maybe she is seeing somebody else. We don't know. So take your time is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, uh, it sounds like you already got a ring picked out or something. If you already put a down payment on it, I guess go ahead and keep making the payments. But you so funny. <laughs> anyway, the point is work through this before you propose. So do you want let's just do one more because okay. we're running out of time. But do you want to do one about first black- of all, we're not running out of time. We have um uh, this is a podcast and not a TV show. We got all the time we need. But now it's it's kind of we are kind of running long. I'm gonna choose to do one more. Do you want to do one about food or one about black business? 
You know what we've been talking about, Nipsey Hussle and Juneteenth. Let's make it black business. Okay. So um, this question comes from Ted. Ted wants to know, why do our people not support black businesses? Easy way to support without money, the daily life of a black entrepreneur and the common obstacles. So, oh, I guess they're saying, why do our people not support black businesses? What are easy ways to support without money? And talk about the daily life of a black entrepreneur and the common obstacles. Sorry, I just read it in a different inflection and it made sense in my head a different way. Anyway, so (laughs) why do people, our people, so I'm assuming black people, not support black businesses? And the reason that I have is we would rather go to Walmart or the Dollar Tree or any other national chain than to support a black business for some reason we think the quality is better and i'm saying we as in overall and i just i disagree like to me i just i'm not gonna get like super woke and hotep and say circulate the black dollar but seriously like why don't we support each other like i don't get it yeah i've heard stories of uh basically other you know ethnic communities yes circulating their dollar within themselves and that's how their kids go to college because they literally support each other they have their own grocery stores their own uh everything basically and they all go straight to each other you know so all of that money that gets circulated through their community is how they send all their kids to college to come back and expand their community um it's People make jokes a lot about uh, people from Mexico and the United States of America all living like 10 families in a regular house. It's like, you know, I'm not going to repeat the actual joke, but point is they do that for a reason. They're all working. They're all saving up. And slowly, one by one, you start seeing people move out of the house because they have saved up and bought their own house. So each family is kind of staying there. Sure, it might not be comfortable. It's a lot of people in a little bit of space, but they sit there and they save their money and then they go and buy their own house and they do the same thing for the next family. It's just like, why do we not support our own? I don't understand Honestly, it, frankly. I, most black people like would rather like just like talk about, oh, they out here doing such and such. Like, it is so sad. Like, right. And that's what really upsets me. I don't get it. I will say like our group of friends is not like that because we all have multiple like business ventures and side hustles and projects that we're working on and we all support each other. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to your next part of the question. What are easy ways to support without money? And that would be just to share, get the word out there. For instance, share this podcast, post about it, talk about it. Like this don't even cost you nothing. It doesn't cost you anything. And Same thing with a friend who has a product. You may be able to buy one thing from them, but then the rest of the year, you could just simply share their posts and get their word out. I have three specific black brands who I basically, anytime who I buy things from on a regular basis and anytime they post anything, I'm liking it, I'm commenting, I'm sharing it. Um, One of them is a very high end luxurious dress shoe line known as lflsshoes.com. Go check it out. I've yes. talked about LFLS Shoes several times on the show um, because that is a very fine product. Young brother, graduated college, decided not to work for anybody else but himself and is making a huge wave in the fashion industry. Yes, yes his shoes are, again, high-end. They're intended to compete with the big brands on the red carpet and they're starting to do that. So the shoes are not cheap. They're not going to be uh, $60. There's, it's not, you know, a black person making a shoe line to, uh, you know, under undercut anybody else's prices. He's making a shoe line to compete. And quite frankly, the shoes, I have two pair. I have two pair. And the comfort, the value, the quality of all of it is worth well over what I paid. So... That same pair of shoes, if Kohan made it or if um, Cavalli made it, it would be like six or seven hundred bucks. So people are like, oh, that's too high. Why are you trying to First of all, it's a high quality product. And we always scream in, know your worth and add taxes. 
But then the very instant when somebody do does it, it, you got a problem. You got a problem. So don't be that person. <sighs> Which so brings me. Obviously, if you can't afford to pay $250 for a pair of high end dress shoes, you might not have a suit to wear with it. But that's another story. Um, share it. It doesn't cost you anything to share it on your Instagram, to share it on your Facebook, to tell your friends about it. Say nice things. Then here's my next thing. Let's say you do buy a product from a black business or a black company. Also, shout out to OBSV and fingerprint clothing those are my other two brands that I, i'm constantly supporting um let's say for example you buy something you buy a shirt online from a black company you discovered on instagram something's wrong shirts uh doesn't look like it did in the picture it doesn't fit the same way or whatever the case let's say you washed it once and it ripped okay whatever happens if the first thing you do is go on instagram and start blasting it you are the problem Yep. Don't be like, man, I bought this shirt from blah, 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 blah. And it already did this. Don't buy nothing. No. Go to them. Go straight to the person you bought it from. Go straight to the company. Be like, hey, I bought this shirt. Here's my receipt, my order number, whatever the case. And I washed it once and it already ripped. Was I Did I wash it wrong? What did I do here? How can we fix this? Um, and let them work with you. Because I guarantee you, I guarantee if you get you. something from Target and, and it's a scratch or a hole or a rip, you're going to return it. You're going to go back to them and you're not going to like, I'm never going to Target again. You're just going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Right. And it's the same thing, especially when it's somebody trying to start a business, anybody trying to start a business, not even necessarily just black people. But at the same time, there are so many challenges to entrepreneurship that you, as a person who's not an entrepreneur, who's never considered it, who may have considered it at one point and never just tried it. There are so many challenges once you actually do it. It's just like that um, that picture of an iceberg. You see a little bit of ice at the top of the water. Success. But then there's a whole lot mm -hmm. underneath the water that you don't see. The hustle. It's all up. There's so much that goes into that. So if you got a problem with something that you ordered from a black company or any company for really, you know, just to be a better person in general, go straight to the person you bought it from. Go straight to the company and work something out. Now, if they just refuse to acknowledge the fact that if they like, you ain't, we, uh, no refund policy, we can't do nothing about. It, OK, then sure, there's probably some issues there and that's on them. But at the same time, put that extra effort in. To, you know, because you could probably solve an issue that they have. You taking the time to be like, hey, here's what happened. Um, can we do this as a resolution? What are your options as a resolution? Can I get another shirt? Can I get a refund and try again later? Go to them first. And then instead of bashing them, talk about their customer service and be like, hey, I got a shirt and washed it once and it ripped. It came apart. Um, they were great. I emailed them. They sent me another shirt the very next day and be that person. You know, yeah, because you at the end of the day, what's going to happen is you're going to feed somebody's kids. You're going to send somebody's kids to college. So and going along with the third part of the question, um, daily life of a black entrepreneur and the common obstacles, I would say one of the common obstacles is people, especially your friends and family, expecting a discount. We run into that with photography. And the thing is, when you are an entrepreneur, when you're building up a side hustle, side business, the majority of your customers are going to be friends and family is right. word of mouth. Right. So you cannot give everybody a discount. You cannot, because if people find out that you gave this person a discount, then that person's going to be like, yeah, they gave me a discount. So blah, blah, blah. And actually, you know, everybody who comes through your doorway is asking for a discount. And you literally cannot grow business like that. You cannot be successful. You cannot be profitable. It's and not probably smart not business. Go, it's not smart business. You're probably not going to hit the goals you set for yourself if everybody gets a huge discount. So at that point, you're automatically undervalued because when it's time for you to charge what you're actually supposed to charge, people are going to look at you crazy. Yeah. People probably look at you crazy either way. But at the yeah. same time, you have to maintain your value. So first of all, when you're dealing with um, a small business, a black owned business, whatever, minority owned business, family owned business, do not run up in there expecting a discount. Just because that's your friend, just because your cousin, just because y'all got the same haircut, do not go and expect a discount. If you're offered a discount, graciously accept it and then buy something else. And I'm saying that because this is what I do. I wouldn't be preaching it if I didn't live it. So uh, let's say LFLS, for example, really good friend of mine. He supported my business. I supported his, but neither of us asked each other for discounts. We don't do that. Because we know we we know our goals. We know what we're trying to do. 
Um, now, if in the event he says, hey, uh, go ahead and take $50 off of this. Bet. Appreciate it. Matter of fact, throw me them, throw me them socks. Throw me that T-shirt. You know what I'm saying? Because I set out with the goal of supporting somebody chasing their dreams. And that's what I'm here to do, quite frankly. So just remember, keep that in mind. Be that person who is going to help somebody get to where they're trying to be. Because remember, like I said earlier in the show, Nipsey Hussle might have got murdered, but a thousand more just popped up in every single city. Be the person that supports that Nipsey Hussle. Don't be the person trying to take away from it. Don't be the person trying to downplay it because it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of sleepless nights. It takes a lot of hard work, a lot of energy, a lot of lost time with your friends and family to get out here and really chase your dreams. So don't get in the way. Don't be the problem. If you can't afford it, tell your friends, find some people who can not help. Just share a freaking Facebook post. That's all it takes. So, again, I've been preaching all, all night. We should be wrapping this up soon. <laughs> um, thanks for that question, Ted. I we want to hear the show to be preaching about more stuff. <laughs> from you. Um, and so we will wrap up the show this week with our love life advice of the week. Like we always do. Just a quick little tip for you. For those of you who are in a relationship or plan to be on one, on one, in one at some <laughs> point in life. I just got that. Um, That's how you know I'm tired. That's how you know I'm tired. <laughs> so my quick tip for this week is just say no to joint Facebook accounts. <laughs> Where they do that at? Oh my goodness. What is that about? I don't understand. That. I want to hear from you if you have a joint Facebook account and you love it and you or are a joint Instagram and you are like ride or die for it and you believe in it and you think it's the best thing for your relationship. I need you to email us at askttrl at gmail.com and I want to know why. Yo, I, um, why? Before we started dating, I met this girl. Why? Her name was Whitney and I didn't realize she was a lesbian until like way later when I found her on Facebook. I look at her Facebook and I was like, I didn't know her last name was Kelly. I thought it was something else. Turns out, and I thought and I thought Kelly was her I mean in was her middle initial. I thought her name was Whitney N. Kelly. Turns out the Facebook page is called Whitney and Kelly. So I'm clicking through the profile page. I'm like, oh she looks different in this picture. I don't want to be yourself. Turns out it was they were in a relationship and they shared a Facebook page. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Why? I don't get what is it. The point? I'm going to tell you right now. When I see a joint Facebook account, I assume somebody cheated. Somebody cheated. And now you got your this individual. This is your punishment. It's like being in a relationship timeout. <laughs> like you don't trust you got each your other. Individual Facebook taken away. First of all, I don't like being friends with people with joint Facebook accounts because it's who, am who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Who's liking this who message? Said this? I don't know who it's, it right. is and I don't like it. And I, I just, I'm no, it, I'm going to tell you right now that to me signal, uh, signifies a lack of trust because it sounds like you want to be all in each other's DMS. If you don't have trust, you simply have nothing. Truth. So I mean, you might have, there might be a decent physical part somewhere where you might be benefiting off the other person's money. But if you don't have trust, what's the point? Yeah, I just feel like um, you can live, you know, just like last week we said your relationship should be private, but not a secret. You can you can share stuff with each other and not be like secretive about it, but also not necessarily be snooping, I guess. is I don't know how to word that, but like, OK, we have fingerprints for each other's phones right so i can open your phone you can open my phone it's like you just did that and i didn't realize you did it i was watching you do it and didn't realize what you did until you said i was like oh it was like normal for me you know but it's not so that i can dig through your phone i have never i've never dug through your phone i have never like never felt the need to what for like it's I, I don't get it can't relate don't ever want to yeah, i'm glad we don't have that problem yeah but yeah good luck to those of you with joint facebook accounts um the one time i went through your phone without you knowing was to send myself a picture of you so i can make your birthday card because i knew you had the full picture Aww. and not the instagram crop version so yeah that was that was it that's sweet yeah most of the time i i was gonna say the only time i use your phone is to text your mom but i just text her on my phone now right um but yeah 
Again, hope Don't everybody had a happy Father's Day. Shout out to my mom's husband, my stepdad, Derek. One of our biggest supporters. Yes, one of the shout first out to people Derek. listening to the show yes, every single time. Faithful listener. Uh, shout out to everybody else who comments regularly. Uh, shout out to Chris. Shout out to Carlisha Washington. Shout out to uh, everybody. I'm not going to start. Jamika. Yeah, Jamika be putting us on game. So shout out to all of you who have been supporting us through all 19 of these over an hour long episodes and they seem to only be getting longer sorry about that but again just hit the pause button and pick it back up later um anything else oh my quick tip i guess is the same thing just <laughs> don't do that because that's stupid that is stupid follow us at this is ttrl go, whose birthday do you put <laughs> follow us at this is ttrl on facebook. on facebook twitter and instagram that's the closest we'll ever get to a joint social media um you can find Terra talks or Ryan listens on your favorite podcast player and um shout out to nikita who showed me her spotify and it had us in her top three favorite hey. podcasts so feel pretty uh, special right there um to be in good company i didn't uh, think we'd be anybody's favorite anything but I've heard I'm that several still times. shocked I'm that people so listen. Very but happy about that, thank you all. Yes, um, we are gonna catch you on the flippity flip. Indeed, we will. Big shout out to the read too, because they were a big inspiration about why we're doing this. Absolutely, so, we love yeah. the read. Yeah, we do. Yes, have a great week, y'all. Peace.